Yeah, I'm here in Wembley Box Park um, ahead of the press conference of Richard Riakpour versus Fabio Turchi in um, a final eliminator for the World Cruiserweight title. Aha, uh -huh. okay, we know that if Mr. Jordan and I have been in the box park, we were up there, you and I met up there before we went in to see uh, the big fight, of course, with Tyson Fury. We did a show from Dillian there. White, we did, a, we did the weigh-in from there, we did the whole show from there. So, um, what's it like up there at the moment? A lot of excitement around what uh, Rackpaw may or may not do uh, come this weekend? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot on the line for React Paul. You know, he's um, he's 14 and 0, 10 KOs. He's on a good run at the moment. And uh, Fabio Turch is a difficult opponent. 21 fights, 20 wins, 14 of those inside the distance. But the one common opponent that they both had is Tommy McCarthy. Now, Tommy McCarthy lost and um, um, beat Turchy on a split decision and React Paul KO'd him in four, both in 2019. So React Paul should come through this one. If he does, He's got his eyes on the WBC champion, Makabu. People might remember Makabu when Tony Benny famously won the Cruiserweight title at Everton, um, Everton Park. Um, Goodison Park. Goodison Park, Goodison Park, yeah. Park sorry. At Everton ground. Park. <laughs> but listen, was close. Guys, he was close. Guys, guys, you know I'm not a big football fan. Give us a break here, you know. <laughs> we will never give you a break. Nor will this man, Talk Sports Fight Night host Adi Oladipo is with us. Adi, how are you, mate? Not bad, not bad at all. Looking forward to, to the boxing on the weekend. He mentioned... Uh, obviously, Richard Riappol headlines there, and look, they need to get a move on with Richard Riappol. He's thirty-two. Um, he's got everything, and he's a good-looking kid. He, he can. He's got punch power, but they need to get him a world title shot. I don't know if this does it, um, but Macabre is a good name. Macabre is a fight I think he could win right now. Whether or yeah. not there's enough money on the table to get Macabre to come over here and fight, as opposed to fighting Lawrence Okoli or just doing what Macabre's doing, is another question. But I think Macabre versus Ratpo is a good fight that should happen by the end of the year. You agree with Adi on that one, Simon? That they need to get a move on with Ratpo. I mean, he's from your neck of the woods. You like he's this? He's at that kid? stage now, isn't he? He's 32, so yeah. it's there and thereabouts. He's had enough fights now to be, put himself in a contention to fight it's the same sort of fights as Lawrence Okoli was getting to the stage when he won a world title. Yeah. So he's there, yeah. ready to go now, isn't he? Wins this fight, yeah. he gets his shot. Listen, I think that they have been in talks, actually. Talks have started with Makabu's team for the WBC title. He's also quite highly ranked um, for Marcus Bredis' title as well. And he's the other cruiserweight champion, the IBF champion. So I think that that fight could happen next for React Four. I think that, you know, I think that they want to push on with him. You're right, guys, in what you say. He is 32 years of age. It is time to get a move on. He's had, he's had that learning development. He's done his apprenticeship. Now it's time to push on for me. Yeah, he needs to push on. Look, the big fight, and it should happen, is him versus Lawrence O'Coley. That, that should be the big fight. But in order for him to come to the table and even kind of, you know, have a conversation with O'Coley, he needs his own world title. He needs a yeah. world title. He needs a really big name on the resume. If he gets that, him versus Lawrence O'Coley is a really, really big fight. I, I say big fight. It's a big fight that won't do the numbers. So I'm not going to pretend and sit here and say it does a stadium or it sells out the O2 tomorrow. Do it doesn't just do it. But it's a big fight for those in the boxing trade, him versus a Yeah, but Adi, I think you're spot on with that because we saw the best of British when you and I were up in Manchester sure. seeing uh, Can Brute. We, we saw the, the, yeah, the best it, of British with, with Tyson and Dillian. Are, but, they, but the body of work that El Amir Khan and Kel Brook have put together is far different to the body of work that Lawrence O'Coley and Richard have put together at this moment in time. Still do numbers, though. So it will do decent numbers, but it won't attract this sort of level. No, I'm going no. to the fight on Saturday that, uh, that um, Richard has. He's got a massive height reach, hasn't he? Yeah. He's got a massive... Oh, so got a massive height difference. Yeah. He's got a massive reach difference. He should he should go through this fight, Spence, relatively easily, shouldn't he? Yeah, Turchi's one of those guys who who comes to fight actually. And if anybody comes to fight with Richard Rapport, as we've seen get in the past, get knocked he's heavy-handed and they do get necked out. Rapport's six foot five. He's a massive cruiserweight. Uh, he could even develop into a heavyweight actually. But um, I sort of agree with you, Addy, as in. I think that fight with Lawrence Acoli only happens if both guys have got a world title because otherwise it isn't a real a real big draw and it's um you know two very talented guys. I believe React Paul gets his shot next and if he does, that does set up that all British clash which would be that would be great for British boxing. One thing I want to throw at Addy and, and your good self, Spencer. Um in fact I'll do it. I'll put it to both of you. Sell me the undercard here. Impress me with it. It's funny you say that. Right. I was looking at the undercard. Sorry to cut across you, Spence. Yeah, and I was thinking, no this is actually probably one of the best undercards they've done. Sebastian Formella. Be yeah, it's Sebastian Formella, fine. who, I mean, you know, we recently saw fight, fought Conor Ben behind yeah. closed doors and fought Sean Porter before that. Chris Congo needs to kick on as well. A really good world to wait. I like that fight. Jermaine Brown versus Zach Chelly for a, for an English super middleweight title. I, I like that as well, if I'm honest yeah. with you. And we get to see Lauren Price. I mean, the thing about these undercards, and it isn't just... Uh, boxer, so I'm not going to dig Ben Shalom when he comes on. It's all of them. 
and, and I mean that, Matram, um, Queensbury, um, what the Southlands are doing, everyone's spreading thin. There's almost too many promoters and broadcasters, unfortunately, showing. So you're going to get good main events, and then everyone's literally, literally trying to fight for fighters. Yeah. So these undercards aren't going to be what people want to see yet. But I think this I, is probably one of the best ones. Yeah, listen, I think that the names on the undercard, like Jermaine Brown, Zach Tilly and stuff, are not really big names, so people won't recognise that, so may not have much interest. But that sort of that sort of fight is a really decent fight. You know, it's a British, um, sorry, English super middleweight title fight. The winner can go on and challenge for the British and Commonwealth titles. You know, I think it's a really good fight, an interesting fight, because it's a coming-of-age fight. Chris Congo as well versus um, Sebastian Formella. That's a good fight for Congo because... As we saw in his last fight, he seems to be on real good form at the moment. So Sebastian Formella has only ever lost to Sean Porter and Conor Ben, both on points. So it's a good opportunity to show opportunity for him to showcase his skills. So I don't mind this undercard, actually. It might be names that people don't particularly recognise, but it's still a decent undercard. Agreed. But El Riley as well, the cruiserweight is on there, who's only had three or four fights, five fights, actually. He can actually fight as well. He's a decent prospect coming through. So chance for him to showcase his skills all right well now i know that if spencer came to my front door if Addy came to my door today i'd end up buying something from them because uh, they both sold the other car <laughs> very well indeed jim white and simon jordan monday to friday mornings from 10 on am on dab via the talk sport app and on your smart speaker talk sport